You know guys, before I start today's video, I just need to let it be known right now that today's video is exclusively about Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, okay? Like, this game just came out. It is currently 3 in the morning. I have a class at 8 in the morning, and I still need to edit this entire video, and albeit, it's not gonna be edited super heavily, but after losing my voice to Great Ape Vegeta... I don't wanna talk about it! I'm losing my voice! I'm losing my fucking voice! I'm losing my voice! Water! Water! <laughs> <coughs> and streaming for nearly five hours. I think it is pretty self-explanatory what this video is about. As if it hasn't been proven by how many records that this game is breaking currently on Steam, or given the fact that this is a COD channel and my live stream nearly has 9,000 total views, which is absolutely ridiculous. So thank you so much for all that support. There is only one way to say this, guys. I have not had this much fun playing a video game in years. Okay, especially not as a COD channel where I literally just torture myself playing Call of Duty, talking nothing but massive loads of shit about the game. <laughs> Of course, when there is something that I find interesting to play and I play it and people are gassing me up in the live stream and people are having a really good time watching, I'm gonna make a video telling you guys right here, right now, I completely and utterly recommend this game if you haven't played it yet. If you are somewhere on the fence about whether or not you wanna play the game or if you're not sure if it's worth it or not, guys, take it from me. I had an absolute blast playing this game and I do wanna come out here in this video and let those people out there that are otherwise shitters, as we say here on the channel, people who are not very good, there is hope for you guys because about three hours into the stream, I figured out the perfect way to just get through these fights. And it's pretty cheap, it's pretty cheesy, but if you're really that much of a pisser, this might be the video for you. And I also wanted to give you guys a quick little summary slash review slash first impressions and thoughts of Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. But before I go any further, you guys already know what to do. If you like the Dragon Ball content, you're in the right spot. If you like me talking shit about Call of Duty, you are still in the right spot. That's not changing whatsoever. And in fact, we have videos lined up very, very soon for the COD people. But for the Dragon Ball fans, just know, Scadmaster Fooly is on his way to the motherfucking top. Right now, I'm ass. I'm not gonna lie. I am ass trash. But I guarantee you, I'm gonna climb the ranks. I'm gonna get at least semi-decent. And you guys are gonna know exactly why I call myself the Scadmaster, all right? But let's shift this very quickly, guys. To all the pissers and shitters and noobs out there and all the Dragon Ball fans that haven't played a Dragon Ball game in years, I know know exactly what you're thinking, man. You're gonna get into this game and you're gonna get deep fried, right? Well, here's the thing. You're absolutely right. You are going to get smacked around. That is just part of the learning curve of this game. But I do have a technique for you guys once you get past maybe like Great Ape Vegeta, because I would say that is genuinely your first true test, and if you can get past that within like 20 or so attempts, then this technique should kind of carry you along for at least majority of the story. I've only done Goku's entire story. I'm not even done with all the other characters. We're gonna do that on stream. Every time I stream, you're just gonna see me going for the 100% with all these characters. But past Great Ape Vegeta towards maybe when you get to the Tournament of Power, which is a massive, massive, chunk of the entire story for Goku at least there is a very easy technique that you can use to get to your advantage to beat these opponents quickly without actually getting yourself hurt too much and within the little time limits that they kind of put upon you you ready for the technique here it is literally just charge up as best you can to the point where you get to your sparking form or whatever it's called where you're fully fully charged up and spam blast those motherfuckers with a bunch of key blasts as much as you can to the point where at least some of them are landing. Not all of them need to land, like they can block some of them, but as long as a few of them are landing, within that small pocket of time from when they flinch from getting hit, that is when you need to hit your ultimate. And your ultimate, at least from my experience, has a success rate of like 95%. And doing so is going to reduce their health bars by like two and a half to maybe even three total. And after they get knocked down from it, you literally just charge back up as fast as you can, as much as you can at a distance, and then just 
do it again. Now this isn't gonna work for like the extremely fast opponents that you have, like some of the small tiny dwarfs, like the fucking Cell Juniors, or even when you get to the Tournament of Power and you're fighting Kefla and all them, like they are ridiculously fast and this technique does not always work, but at least within that massive chunk of time, and I would assume it works for pretty much everybody else, this is what you wanna do if you are genuinely a pisser. If you're not some super Dragon Ball Sparking Zero Wop Slayer 3000 and you don't already have like every single combo memorized this is probably the best route to go if you genuinely want to get through it like i said it has an extremely high success rate all you need to do spam key blasts when you're in your sparking form okay first charge up spam them with the key blasts and within that small tiny pocket of time hit your ultimate and I guarantee you, more than enough times, it's going to land. And it's gonna feel sick, the animation and the cutscene's gonna look fucking crazy, and yes, it might be a little spammy, but the point is for some of these people to get through these missions fast, and honestly, even from me getting my ass kicked and finally finding out that I can do this, towards the end when I got to the Tournament of Power, I mean, you guys can ask around or look around in my past livestream, I was cooking. I didn't really need to use this technique all that much, like it wasn't that much of a crutch, but I was literally shit. Like, if you compare my first couple of fights to some of my last ones, I was doing some ridiculous shit. Don't you shrug me off. Oh! Oh! So if you're having trouble in that learning curve period of time, I highly recommend you try this out. Even if it's a little cheesy, just get your foot in the door and get back into it, you know what I'm saying? But anyways guys, past all of that, my first impressions of this game are very, very simple. Absolutely astonishing to look at. Just visually, this is one of the greatest games that I've ever laid my eyes on. In terms of like colors and contrast and the vibrancy of everything and all of these cutscenes and animations, the fluidity of the fighting, all of the above, ridiculously insane. You have no idea how smooth this game feels in comparison to some of the other Dragon Ball games. And now I understand, a lot of people are a big fan of Fighter Z and Xenoverse and some of those more recent games, but trust me, as somebody who mainly played the Budokai Tenkaichi series back on the PS2 and then played a game like Kakarot, you know, some of the more mainstream Dragon Ball titles, this is by far, not even close, the most fluid, and smooth Dragon Ball game that I've ever fucking played. Yeah, now listen! And I'm not even trying to gas it up that much or like gooch lick it because there are some things that I am still critical about when it comes to this game, but for the most part, and I genuinely mean the most part, my experience on this game was insanely fun. Especially once you start learning some of the combos and learning how to guard a little bit better and learning how to do all these other fancy tricks. The smoother you get yourself, the smoother everything feels and you literally just feel like a fucking God. And I don't know about you guys, but I personally like feeling that way. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I am quite genuinely a shitter at this game. I am not playing any of these goddamn online matches yet. I'm sure as fuck not playing ranked play anytime soon. He's scared. Yeah. He's scared, ain't you bitch, never. But as somebody who has a genuine love for the Dragon Ball franchise, like I completely grew up on this, even just tapping into the nostalgic factor of playing through all these older fights that we used to know as a kid, everything was just amazing in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, I definitely had the stream buff going on, okay? Like, I definitely had my head inflated during this time, but I genuinely can't lie to you guys. This is the most fun I've had in years when it comes to playing a new video game. And yes, even after Great Ape Vegeta, that guy was pissing me the fuck off. This guy might have actually been the hardest fight in the entire goddamn thing, even past somebody like Jiren in my opinion, because by that point, you already learned the game a little bit better, you already know the combos. I really like all the voiceovers, I like how all of these characters talk to each other before and during the fights. The music is awesome, all the transformation cutscenes and attack cutscenes, especially the ultimate cutscenes. I promise you, it is literally cinema. But, I will say, there is two things that I wasn't too hot on when it came to Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. Now, it's definitely not enough for me to be like, oh, this game sucks, it stinks, you should go play Xenoverse instead. Like, no, it's not like that whatsoever. These are just my personal gripes, and I doubt that these are ever gonna change, but it's just something that kind of bothered me a little bit. The first thing is we kind of have this thing from like Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, 
where sometimes when the characters are talking, I don't know, man, it just looks kind of funky. Like it's not really matching up with the words that are being said. And I understand that's pretty common. That's pretty meta for all the Dragon Ball games. But in a game where pretty much every single other animation is literally top notch S tier, this one kind of took away from the immersion of that in my opinion. Now, the other thing that was kind of getting under my skin was there is like an unknown time limit that you have for majority of these fights. Like if you don't kick Frieza's ass in the first like couple of minutes, the fight just ends and continues on from the story. And guys, I'm not lying. It does that very, very often. Now, obviously, if you're not a complete piss stain like me, you're probably not even going to notice the time limit and you're just going to get through it and just breeze through. And that's cool. That's good for you. But as somebody who kind of needed to get back into it. Yeah, that was pretty annoying, especially when I realized that it wasn't just the game being the game. That's just them really wanting you to beat this guy under the certain time limit that there is. And I don't know, to me, it's kind of annoying because I could be in the middle of a combo. I could be right before a, an ultimate attack finisher. And it's actually happened a couple of times where I was like one hit away from beating my opponent and then it just ends. Now to get around that, obviously you just need to be fucking better or what I would also suggest is maybe just putting up a time limit somewhere on the goddamn HUD. Please! Please! Other than that, I still had a good time playing, all right? Now, I, I do kind of miss the whole aspect of Kakarot where you actually play through every single specific detail of the story and it's kind of like free roam and you could just explore. In this, it's kind of true to the original Budokai Tenkaichi series where it's just fight, couple of cutscenes, fight, couple of cutscenes. But when you're stuck on one character, like for example, I did Goku, it feels like you're rushing through the story too quick, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, especially not if you're a fan of the Budokai Tenkaichi series, but those things don't really make or break the game for me. And honestly, the good completely, not even close, outweighs all of the bad that I see in this game. And there's not even that much bad. So for all intents and purposes, I still recommend this game to literally everybody. Like I had such a good time, especially if you are at a state where all of these other games are just boring you, like Call of Duty and shit like that. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero was such a breath of fresh air for me and I completely enjoyed it start to finish. And I'm not even done with it yet. And the streams are gonna continue. I'm gonna try to do them as close to daily as possible. And we're gonna play for at least a few hours each stream, just going through every single character character and perhaps some online and ranked matches perhaps my overall rating at the end of this guys 9 out of 10 I'm not exaggerating when I say that. I genuinely think this is a 9 out of 10 for me so far, five hours into it. And that can change, who knows, but I will have a much more in-depth review of Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, and it's gonna be like a straight up dedicated review as to whether or not you should buy this game, probably within the next week or so, but for now, I just wanted to get this out to you guys, just my first impressions, my first thoughts, and a very easy tip for the noobs and the pissers out there that are just like me, and we're having trouble with some of these fights. But that's gonna do it for me today, guys. I'm curious to know what you guys think about all this. Have you played Dragon Ball Sparking Zero yet? Do you plan on playing it? What are your thoughts on it? Just let me know down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, hit the bell notifications to stay up to date with my newest videos. And uh, yeah, guys, it's been the boy Fooly. Have yourselves a good one. I'm out of here. Peace.